failed marketing campaign look like to you? We often talk about trying to succeed and the kinds of results we want and what a good marketing campaign looks like. But stop and think for a moment. What does failure actually mean? One way to define it, and I'm sure a lot of people resonate with it, is not really getting any traffic. You put all of your work into something, you know, you hired a team, you spent energy and your budget on creating this wonderful, wonderful campaign and nobody looks at it. That could be a failure. Another way you could define failure is a lot of people did look at it, but it didn't do anything, right? Empty traffic. Maybe it wasn't resonating with the right people. Maybe it just didn't convert. Nobody stuck around. There was no overall brand boost. Nobody you know, converted to a sale or downloaded your ebook or whatever else you were promoting. That would be a failed campaign. <laughs> Bad PR from a campaign could be another failure potentially, right? You were trying to make an announcement and the media and the public started hating on it and now your brand reputation is damaged. The fourth failure scenario might be that the campaign never actually finishes because there were conflicts on your team, maybe between other stakeholders, might have had external consultants or agencies involved, there was a budget issue, something else had to be scrapped, alignment wasn't there. So if we look at these four kind of ways that your marketing campaigns could fail, there's nobody sees it, no traffic, traffic, but it's the wrong kind of traffic, so it doesn't actually advance your marketing or business goals in any way, bad reputation and damage to your brand because of a bad PR reception, or the marketing campaign never finishes because of some sort of conflict or getting scrapped or budget issues. If you think about it this way, does that change how you set your goals? I feel like in marketing, we're often afraid to talk about the worst case scenario. We talk about success. We talk about trying to optimize for success. We also talk about the times we've failed, at least quite a few people do. But when we're planning, we often don't want to imagine the worst case scenario. But I think looking at these potential failures when we start, when we're first planning, is useful. What we can do is we can prioritize the kinds of risks that we're willing to take. For certain campaigns, certain risks are worse, right? If you're investing a ton of money into something, then it not getting seen might be the worst possible risk. Or if you're trying to be scrappy and you're trying to move quickly, then getting seen by the wrong audience might be the worst possible risk because if you're not seen by anybody, you know, you can iterate on it, that's fine. Or if this is a very sensitive kind of new brand adjacent campaign, then maybe bad PR is the worst possible risk. And if you know what you're trying to avoid, you can mitigate those risks, right? You can take actions so that you can avoid that scenario as much as possible, or at least you have a plan of action if the failure does come to be, right? If you're worried about nobody seeing your campaign, you were producing, I don't know, a great series of blog posts or a webinar or something and nobody signs up. What you can do is you can plan, okay, we're going to repurpose it, right? Even if nobody sees it in this original form, at least we can use our other platforms as a way to still get value out of that content, right? Another way is to build in more distribution and pour more resources into planning for having some baseline traffic, right? If you know that you want this campaign to be seen by a very specific audience, you're doing something that is very much targeted to a certain kind of professional in a very specific vertical, maybe a specific kind of subset of it, specific title, right? then you can make sure that you're distributing in places where those people go. And you can actually design your marketing creative and your actual campaign materials to appeal to that demographic so that you make sure that whatever views you get, they're not likely to be the general public. They're not likely to be people who you're not trying to target because they wouldn't be interested and they wouldn't be looking there in the first place. 
I think this question gets lost so often. We try to just get everything. Every campaign should have as much traffic as possible. Every campaign should advance our brand image. Every campaign should grow our following and get us sales and demo requests. And also it should make us look really good. And uh, I don't know, it should all finish in two days and require no resources. But that's impossible. It's not going to happen. Especially if you're scrappy. Especially if you have limited resources. Especially if you're trying something new or taking a risk. You have to do a marketing risk assessment when you start a campaign. And you have to keep working on that risk assessment as you're progressing, as the campaign changes, as the market changes, as the audience preferences and conditions around it change. Think about what you're afraid of. Think about ways to mitigate those risks and plan not only for successes, but for failures and what you could learn out of them so that your effort is not wasted no matter what happens. Thank you. Mm-hmm.